called out the same day, at the same time, to the same location. Where could this be heading? Welcome, viewers, to the plot dump. Hey, do the kids look okay? Something seems a little off, right? Something in the face, maybe? Okay, no, something is definitely wrong here. They did a flashback where they look normal and then they go right back to this. What is what is happening? Who are these characters? Were, were these conversations filler? It, is this where the budget died? Guys, today's episode is a plot dump, a portion of the story dedicated to relaying important story information to the characters and the viewers, some that we already know, some that has been hinted at, and some that we had no idea was there or were only vaguely aware of. To put it simply, it's a lot of talking. Which, depending on how you feel about the intricacies of the plot, can be a very boring episode. And given that we know most of the relevant information, or at least could imply it, there wasn't much hope. However, I do enjoy some of the things that they did with all of that talking. We have spent many an episode of a singular character vomiting backstory at the audience, or another character, with nary a break in sight. But here it feels a little more vibrant. Multiple characters are relaying the information that they gathered, some that we even watched them gather. We get to see several characters and their personalities bouncing off each other as they continually interject during the meeting. <laughs> You're a cute son of a bitch, but you better stay the hell away from that frog. Don't you seduce her with candy. A discussion is being had here instead of getting slammed with a wall of text. This not only makes it feel like organic storytelling, but also works as a way to familiarize ourselves with characters relevant to this arc. Fuck you, Rocklock. I hate you, piece of shit. I hope you get stabbed. And sure, there's still a large portion of talking coming from Night Eye. Don't worry, we'll get to you, buddy. But it made sense given the scenario, which is super cool, by the way. We're part of a group mission. We got some CIA debriefing shit going on here. It is a new side of heroing that we are seeing Deku take part of. A lot of the crime we have seen so far have been response-type incidents, such as the norm. But now we have this little treat, this abnormal situation that requires planning and plotting. You got organized crime, we need organized solutions. We saw little hints of this with the raid on Kamino, but now we are in there. We are a part of this and it's fucking cool, it's awesome. This is a far better atmosphere to be discussing the details of the story, much to the detriment of the rest of the season so far. Overloading us with two recap episodes followed by two exposition heavy episodes, by the time we hit this one, it can be very exhausting. Yet this episode is probably the most interesting in terms of story delivery. They definitely could have rearranged and cut down a lot of this season to flow a little better, save some of the more relevant information for this meeting, less night eye wall of texting Deku and Bubble Girl. Let more of the information be revealed here to make the impact more, well, impactful. It's not terribly complicated. We could have just been given tiny bits and pieces to get a vague idea. All this is basically my way of saying there's too much talking, but not here. This too much talking was good too much talking, and the too much talking from before was too much to let the too much now be just the right amount. Am I making sense? Does that register? Is, is, is this a coherent thought? Still, in a vacuum, this episode's good. The rest of the season kind of drags it down a little bit. But I still liked it, uh, you know, still fuck Rock Lock, and Eraserhead is a good boy teacher man, the very cute last quarter of the episode, big good, big good. Big good.